Hello everyone, my name is Nate, and in this video we're going to be going over opening Rhino for the first time and taking a look at the interface and some basic terminology and tools that you will need uh, in order to use Rhino successfully. So uh, let's open Rhino here. So I have Rhino open. It doesn't matter if you're using Rhino 6 or 7. Uh, for this I'm using Rhino 6. So the first thing I want to go over when you first open Rhino is you'll see this four square layout, which can be a little bit confusing at first. Uh, at first, just keep it like this. And at any point, if you do wanna go, let's say into perspective, you can double click perspective and it will click over the whole screen. And also you have to make sure that you have activated the view in order to use that view. So you'll notice when I touch that square, it will highlight here. And then just some basic navigation tips to know. Uh, when you have at perspective activated, if you right click, it will automatically do this orb rotate. Whereas when you're in top view, it will automatically pan. In order to pan in perspective, you have to hit shift and then you can pan the perspective. And then use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out top view, use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So the first thing we'll be going over is curves. And in Rhino, everything that is line work is considered curves. So even if you're making a rectangle, this would be considered a curve. Uh, Rhino, especially in, in top view, is very similar to CAD. And you kind of can think of it almost like a CAD program that then also has 3D capabilities but you can do all your drafting in top view, front view, and the right view, and then uh, extrude that information. So we'll go over that uh, in just a second. But first we'll do make a rectangle. For this exercise, we're gonna be making a desk. And so for that, I'll start off with making a rectangle. And I can essentially click once and then click anywhere on the screen and it will start the rectangle. And then if you wanna give this rectangle dimensions, then you type in 12 feet, enter one, let's do three feet. I did inches, 12 feet, enter. And then you'll see I have this very long desk. If you want to change the size of the de this desk at any point, you can type in scale 1D press enter, hold the base point, one click, and then another click, and then specify the length. So let's say six feet, and you can resize something. Make sure that when you type in this, that you don't just press scale, because that will scale everything. You have to make sure to do in 1D if you're just wanting to scale one aspect of it. And you'll notice that it always tells you what it wants. So for instance, I typed in scale, pressed enter, and it says select object to scale. I would press that. It says select object to scale, press enter when done, press that. Pick a base point. Okay, I did that. Click the, f the first reference point. Okay, I did that. And then it says specify the point. Uh, and you can do that. Another thing, uh, while we're at it, well, I want to make sure we mention that you'll notice down here you'll have planar, O snap, smart track, gimbal, record history. There's all these options down here, and then the associated uh, things that go along with that. So for this exercise, just make sure that O snap is on and that you have these uh, selected. And what that does is when you're drawing a line, you're able to snap to the midpoint or to the end and it makes modeling a lot easier. Another thing you wanna pay attention to is the gumball. And the gumball is a great tool, I always like to have it on, but you can turn it off and on using the gumball. So just in case if you've opened Rhino and there's no gumball, that's where you turn it on and off. Okay, so so far we are going over, we're still talking about curves. So this is the, the rectangle and this will be the tabletop for this exercise. And so in order to extrude this curve, there are three ways that you can do this. 
The first way is you'll notice on the gumball, if you highlight it, it will turn black, and either the arrow will turn black or this circle will turn black. And once that circle has turned black, if you uh, click hold and then drag up, you'll notice that it extrudes that curve. If you do want this whole thing to be solid, then you would come in here and type in cap, and then it would make it solid. The next way that you can extrude this curve is type in extrude curve, and then extrude it. And when you do this too, I should mention that you can also type in the dimensions. So I could do four inches, and then I have an extruded curve. And what this extrusion means is they call this a poly surface, or a clo in this case, it's a closed extrusion. Extrusion, and it's basically it's a solid object uh, ver versus something that would be a series of sign uh, of of faces or surfaces uh, or curves. Another thing I want to point out is you might be in wireframe in which the solid will not appear. So just make sure that you're in solid, uh, in shaded, and then there's also the option to do rendered, ghosted, and these are various uh, view options. Sometimes when I'm in top view, I like to do wireframe and then perspective. I'm usually in shaded every now and then ghosted or sometimes technical if I'm exporting a drawing. Okay, so we have the tabletop here pretty simple. Now we can go back into top view and for the legs, we can just draw a rectangle uh, again and then you have the option to either type in mirror and click the midpoint, click that, mirror, click the midpoint, take all those curves, select all those curves. So I'm hitting shift and selecting all those curves and then hitting extrude, let's say four feet. And then I would have my legs for my desk. Another way, uh, you can also just extrude one object and then copy and paste it. Uh, it's up to you and how you want to draft. And I should also note that you can also go into another layer if you want to use drafted lines, which to set up where you want your geometry. So let's say I want a certain offset or a certain proportion. I can use uh, another color to set up maybe where I would want uh, to place a specific thing. When you do make a curve, there is one last way to make it into a solid geometry. And that is if, let's make sure I have this selected in the, let's move this over. I can make a curve and I can hit planar surface. Turn this off planar surface. Now, when once I have a surface, I can type in extrude. Instead of extrude curve, I can do extrude surface. And so which extruding technique, it doesn't really matter. It really depends on the situation. Sometimes you just have a surface, and at first you don't need to extrude it. And then at some point you're like, oh no, I need to give that some thickness. And then you would extrude the surface. Uh, most of the time you're gonna be drafting lines in both top view or front or right view, and then extruding that geometry in the perspective view. The next thing I would like to go over is manipulating these solids once you have finished modeling this. And there are a lot of different ways you can do that, but uh, for now what we'll go over is if you hit Control Shift and then select a face, you can then move that geometry to make it thicker. Another option is you can control shift select and you hit that circle button and then you actually extrude an additional uh, piece off of that object. So it's still one object, but it's similar to uh, SketchUp where you can then when you select it, it will be a separate face and then you can move that. Notice how these things are now still connected. If I wanted it, that not to be connected, Let's do the, the rendered view in here. For one of those to not be connected, 
I would control shift and then I would move it instead of hitting that circle. And now, sorry, I would hit the top of those and extrude it and then it would be separated. Back to shaded. And you can also do that by selecting the edge as well and you can move the edge or you can select a point and again I'm hitting control shift and then I can move this. So it's just an additional way to uh, basically manipulate the geometry once you have made it. Another thing I should mention is you could make this in side view as well if you're going to make a leg and you could for instance make a specialty shape and then make that shape well that shape doesn't make sense but let's say I come in here and do they call this a polyline but really it's just a curve um, so let's make a shape I'll click that once then twice click this curve shape click it once click it twice and you'll notice I've clicked this top but then I've moved it and it's doing this if I want it to finish it I hit enter it will hit that last clicked mark it's a little weird at first but and then I have to select all these curves and then hit join now I have three I have something that's called you'll see here properties a closed curve now, something to note while we're talking about curves again is that unlike in SketchUp, curves don't automatically join together. Uh, so for instance, these are separate lines. Or if I draw a series of lines here and another series, they are treated as separate lines. And you actually have to go back and do things in order to get that to be joined, uh, a joined curve. And the other thing to know is you cannot extrude non-planar curves. So what I mean by that is, let's say I make a curve and I go in this direction. So now I'm in top view and I go like that and come around and then come back up here and complete the curve. You'll notice in, in top view, you would say, oh yeah, it's planar, but when you come into top, uh, in the side view, it looks like it's a flat image, but then here you'll notice it's uh, non-planar. It's not flat to the X, Y, Z. And so now when I extrude that, it can extrude it, but it can't become solid. You would have to go back and do another operation to make this whole object solid. And you can't type cap, it'll say unable to cap. So in order to combat this, um, let's say you do have a non-planar curve. In order to combat this, whatever view you have selected, you can hit um, project to C plane and do delete um, things. So what that will do is like, let's say I want to do this in the front view and do project to C plane. And now it has projected that curve to the C plane. Now I can take that curve and when I extrude it, it will be solid. Now, if this curve is what's called an open curve, so let's draw an open curve. And I extrude this, it's not gonna be solid, it's gonna be open. And so when I select this curve, I'll see here, oh, open curve. Now you can come in and do close curve and it will automatically close the curve. If I wanted to make this solid, there would be additional steps that I would have to take that we'll get into later in order to close this open surface. So that are those are sort of the basics of being able to model in side view, front view, and extruding curves and sort of all the issues that come up with that. The last thing I want to mention is uh, piping. So if you want to pipe something, let's say I instead of having a square leg, I have a, a circle leg, or maybe I have a crossbar here, so I'll draw a crossbar. I can draw a curve, and I can type in pipe. And then I'll just do 0.5 inches, 
0.5 inches and then hit done and then I get a pipe. I should mention the other way to do this would just become come up, go to your panels tool here and look for the various solid object operations. So I could just go cylinder and then do that. So that would be another way to model um, a pipe or, or a cylinder in this case. One other really helpful navigation tip is zoom to selected object. So for instance, if I select this object, I can come up to this magnifying glass and it's zoom selected. And that way when I hit this right orbit button, it uses that as the reference. So for instance, if I'm working around this uh, rectangle, I can come up here, zoom selected, and then now it's using that as my center orbit. So sometimes when you're working on a really large model and you're zooming around that, and then you go and then you go to this work on a something that's small and all of a sudden you it's really hard to navigate around then i would select this hit zoom selected another way to get there is you can come up and just type zoom and there'll be different options here so you could do zoom selected but you have to have first have an object zoom and then hit selected and it will go there. Or there's another option as well, zoom extents, and then that goes to the boundary of all your extents. But just to kind of make you aware that there's various ways that you can model specific objects, but typically you're modeling curves and then making that into solid geometry. I just wanna make sure that I've covered everything here Let's see. I think that's most of the terminology for opening Rhino for the first time. Uh, a couple things that I just want to make you aware of. Last things is just to remember in this when you go to file properties, you can check what units you're in. And that's feet. Um, just to verify it. And then you can verify dimensions by doing dim, uh, dim aligned and then dragging here. There's no sort of equivalent to the tape measure tool like there's in SketchUp. And so what you have to do is, is do things like model lines and move those a specific amount. So if I m move this line, I would then move it up, let's say like five inches, move it up. There are a couple ways to move an object. For instance, I could select this object and hold and click, and then it snaps to that point, and then I can move it along uh, a specific line or, or curve. So you wanna just make sure that when you are, that it is snapping to something if you want a specific dimension. If you just have it out in, in wild and you select 12 feet, it's just gonna go in some random direction and you're not really gonna have an idea of what that reference point is. Another way that you can move something is just select something and type in move and then specify the point that you want to move it in and move it. You can also hit shift to sort of lock it into place as well. Another thing I would like to say is to repeat a command, you hit spacebar and it repeats that command um, automatically. So just something to keep in mind. And I think enter does the same thing. Yeah, enter does the same thing. So pretty frequently I'm using both the spacebar and the enter command as I'm going through this. Let's see if there were any other points to make. If there are other, any other points, these sort of major kind of first terminology points that I missed, just, um, yeah, let me know. I think we went over cap, extrude, are sort of some of the main terminology points. Um, and then this, the, the planar, making sure that it's a planar curve in order to extrude it. Making sure you are in the right view to 
um, that you're not looking at this as wireframe and then thinking, is this a closed poly surface? Solid geometry is called, yeah, it's basically, um, it will say here, open extrusion. Oh, this is an open extrusion, so I can go cap and then it will be closed extrusion, closed solid poly surface. There you go. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Uh, and please look out for some more videos to come. I think after this, there is a uh, switching from SketchUp to Rhino, uh, which is similar to this, but probably not as uh, basic. So be sure to check that out as well. And please remember to like and subscribe to these videos. Thank you.